on December 16th in the heart of Toronto, a Montrealer by the name of Louis the Mad Prince Jourdain will head over enemy territory and face Toronto's veteran, Gabe Sagman. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a fight. The one and only Louis the Mad Prince Jourdain. Louis, thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure, man. So tell me, why the Mad Prince? Because uh, uh, growing up, I was a um, kid with a lot of anger. And especially like uh, in the beginning of my career, my first pro fight, I was somebody always with the Udi on, shaved head, always in my bubble, always, I always looked mad. So my brother decided to call me the Mad Prince and it's the, it, it stuck. Your brother, uh, Charles Jourdain? Yeah, Charles Jourdain, he, he gave it to me. Tell me about your, your relationship with your brother. Is he somewhat of your mentor? Or is it a little bit more of a, of a competition between you two? <laughs> oh, it's always competition. Uh, when we train, when we do sparring, um, there's a lot of competition, but at the same time, he's also my mentor because, you know, he's been fighting on a bigger stage than me for, for, for many years. So technically, I'm kind of following his footsteps. And also, he started MMA one week prior to me. So technically, he started before me, so I'm following his step. But uh, yeah, I, I'm learning as much as I can from him. Beautiful. Um, so you're fighting Gabe Sagman. But aggressive. And Wilson, not what concerned. Out of Gabe? Not you know, at this point. Nice by Sagman. Well, we, we did our research. We, we know his style. We know we know how he fights. He, uh, we know he's going to try to take me down. He's going to feel the punches, the kick. And he's going to try to take me down and submit me. And this is my job to prevent him from doing that and to, to, to knock him out. You're going to knock him out? For sure. What round are you going to knock sure. him out in? We'll see. We'll see how I feel that night. You know, if I feel bad, maybe the second. If I feel good, maybe the first. We'll see. How are you going to knock him out? With a kick? With your hands? I can't I can tell you, you that. You can't tell man. me that? No, it's secret, man. Secret can, info. Can you tell me when the, when the cameras are off? Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Amazing. Amazing. Um, you also... Um, you're coming off of a loss in, uh, in MMA, and you're coming off of uh, a victory in boxing. Mm -hmm. what, what's your mental state like headed to somebody else's hometown to fight them there? The thing is, fighters always talk about mental state, how am I mentally, like uh, what's been my last fight, what's been this and that, but when you arrive in the octagon, like it's, it's life or death. You, 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 you have to defend yourself. It's not because I feel bad mentally that I'm gonna be like, mm, I'm not gonna defend the takedown. Oh, I'm gonna eat the jab. Hmm. You know, it's your instinct, it's how you are. Of course, you can break mentally, kind of, but I don't know. It's, ne it's never been my thing to break mentally. So, yeah, I'm coming off a loss in MMA, but hey, I took a very, very tough fight. I took a very tough fight on two week notice at the end of the world in Abu Dhabi. Two week notice against a very good fighter. He had twice the amount of my fight. He was black belt in Taekwondo, black belt in Judo, uh, Uzbekistan champion in Judo. He was part of uh, Khabib's team over there. All, the, all of uh, Khabib, uh, Khabib was there, all of his team was there. He was part of their team. He was a very good fighter. I took the fight on short, short notice. So, and, and you know, went to distance with him. Yeah, I went to distance with him. And I was so dead during that fight. Like, not that I wasn't prepared, because I'm always training, but the, 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 the odds weren't in my favor. I just took the fight to, you know, live the trip, live something. At the, end, at the end of your life, you only get memories and you have to create them. So I took the fight. Third round, I was walking forward towards him. I was, I was trying to win the fight. I did my best. I lost. And then we, we, we go to the next one, but I know maybe my five next opponent won't be as good as that guy. Mm. And I was maybe at 10% of what I can bring. And I was still walking forward. So, you know, it is what it is. I fought in front of Dana White. I fought in front of Khabib. Mm. It was a great experience. I did money and uh, we, we go to the next one. So that's, that's a, a confidence booster for you. Kind of, yeah. 
are you more convinced that you belong at the top with these guys now? For sure. If I would have been prepared, I would have uh, I would have messed that guy up for sure. Yeah, I, did, I chose some some I chose some good stuff. At the end of the first round, he was on the floor like uh, because of the some kicks I threw to him. You, the guy was messed up, mm. and I did a lot of damage with with the, the amount of preparation I had. So yeah, kind of a confident booster. Yeah. So what from that fight are you gonna bring to to Gabe, the side man? Every fight's different, but I know that that guy was a lot better than Gabe. Uh, that that fighter was w w was a lot better. So I don't think I don't think Gabe can 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 do anything to me that that guy couldn't. You know. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from the man himself, the Mad Prince. He's ready. He's coming for war, and he's coming for Gabe. Thanks for coming on, brother. No problem. Thank, Thank you, you, man.